Hello there, all you other fellow foreigners. Um, just a quick update. This is one of the little like vlog videos about how life is going. Um, it's going good. This is this past weekend so far has been a trip. <laughs> Friday was just Friday, so nothing really happened there. Everything kind of finished off, and everybody went to sleep. Saturday is when everything kicked off. Um, Saturday was October first, and on October first was. The was there was a couple of different festivals. I believe there was some type of bamboo festival that was held down in Wakayama, but I did not go to that. I stayed in the local Tanabe area and I participated in the um, Benke Matsuri. Now, the Benke Matsuri or Benke in particular is a very famous, basically warrior monk in history. Um, you can look them up online, Benke and Tanabe Benke Matsuri. It's very fairly simple to find. But it was, there's a long history, long story of how a very famous warrior monk or monk who became warrior or warrior who became monk, I'm not entirely certain which, went on this journey, fell in love with the princess. The princess then died, so he took vengeance or something. I don't know. It's this fanciful tale in, in a lot of different aspects. But the festival itself has many different dances, many different songs, many different aspects of it that are all very popular and very traditional in most areas of Japan. And it's tied very closely with like the traditional bamboo festival held out throughout held throughout the rest of the country. Um, and the reason why I say this is because there's a very there's a very specific event that happens at all of these different festivals. It's the throwing of the mochi. Um, which was just an absolute hysterical moment. I have it on a GoPro video that I'll be able to upload later on. But it's the, in different areas at different times of the day, they have this stand or on a stage, and these people basically play some type of like Japanese Benny Hill music. It's really funny. And then there's just this group of people that will stand up on the stage, and they'll grab handfuls of these pre-done mochi, which is a rice cake. It's a very soft, gooey freshly pounded rice cake with like like bean curd flour surrounding it. Um, and they just chuck them in, in the middle of a crowd. Now, of course, they're wrapped in plastic bags. They're not just throwing sticky rice at everybody, but it's in plastic bags. And they just, show, just throw them out in the middle of the street or out in the middle of a, of a crowd of people. And it is one of the funniest things to see and to feel, now that I've actually been a part of it, where you'll be crouched down or standing up or whatever it is, the, however the actual procession goes for that specific event, and they'll, start, they'll just start chucking handfuls of these mochi packets, and sometimes you'll get one in the air, you'll catch it, sometimes it'll fall down around you, you'll be able to get it, and if not, you know, whatever. But the one thing you have to watch out for that's the most dangerous thing is... And I do not mean this in any like overtly hysterical fashion. It's the grandmas. The grandmas are vicious. <laughs> the Obachans are some of the most mean and ruthless people in that moment when it comes to getting the mochi and fighting for mochi. I was practically violated on two different occasions within a three minute time span of sort of crouched down trying to trying to catch mochi trying to pick up mochi and I, I, got, I got hit in the face with rice cakes twice and each time they bounce off my head and then fell in between like my nether crotch region area so I'm like oh I'll reach down and grab that <laughs> no grandma is on the ground crawling like a freaking frog snatching things out from underneath people's butts I had four different pieces of mochi that ended up near my feet, and before I could even register how to look down, it was gone because people are just reaching up underneath you, straight into your private zone, and grabbing mochi from your butt. And that's not a euphemism. <laughs> like, that's literally what happens. And it's not just the grandmas, it's everybody. It is a free-for-all. Now, of course, no one gets hurt that I know of. <laughs> But if you're not careful, you'll either bowl someone over, you'll step on their hands, or you'll end up awkwardly holding someone else's hand while they wrestle mochi out of yours. It was so hysterical to have all these tiny little old hunchback grandmas wandering around the area and just, just freaking ninjing and grabbing and poking and prodding other people to get them out of the way so they could get the, the mochi that was on the ground. It was the funniest thing. 
and the music that they sent it to was also hysterical. But that's only part of the Benkei Festival, and that's one of the most hysterical parts. And of course, there was a traditional fireworks show once again. I believe I've already uploaded some of those pictures onto Facebook and whatnot, but... It was just, a, it was just, once again, it's another Matsuri. There was many dances, many music. It was just, and of course, all the food stalls. God. Japanese food stalls are nice because of the fact that you actually get a, kind of a variety of different things. But just be prepared. Most of them are going to be fried foods. <laughs> so if you're from the South, you're in good hands. Um... But yeah, it was it was just a fun experience. I didn't get to see as many other foreigners. I think there was just a handful. Um, I mean, I only saw maybe five total, and that's including myself. <laughs> um, yeah, it was just a good time. It was just a good day. And I was with one person in particular. His name is Chris. He's another ALT in the area. He's out in Minabe. We had a good time. We went around, walked around, had some food, laughed, took videos, pictures, and that kind of stuff. Um, we then proceeded to go to a different location to be able to get a really good view of the fireworks. And then we went to an izakaya and had some, some drinks and some food to just kind of finish off the night. And, uh, I was originally supposed to meet up with a small group of people. If you've watched any of my other videos, you might know them or I might've told you about them, but I'll tell you about them again. It's the Nasu family. Well, Nasu family and friends. Um, very sweet couple. Fukuji is the husband and then the wife is uh, Kazuya and they're wonderful people. They've been so good to me. They're like my Japanese mother and father now, uh, more or less. That's just like what I can equate them to because today, actually, today, Fukuji actually woke me up at 8 o'clock in the morning with a phone call and he then said, come to the family mart, which is the grocery, not the grocery, but the convenience store, just like with a five minute walk from my apartment. I'm like, okay. And I mean, we had already planned this, but it's just, he woke me up, got me to there, then drove me across town and took me to his local barber shop. Uh, so, I mean, as you can see, I had a lot more hair in some of my other videos and, uh, recently, but I got a haircut today. Um, and I mean, it's not my normal style of haircut. It's like extremely thin here and then it's nice or nice or longer, I should say up here um so i mean it's a nice contrast i've always wanted to have this area shortened much more than this area up here anyway so it's a decent haircut i like it um i sh i really i didn't even think about recording it uh beforehand i should have because it would have been very interesting because i got a full treatment and it was only like a 15 to 20 dollar haircut um but i got like a full treatment head and scalp massage shampoo you know, conditioner and all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, buzz, snips, cuts, thinning. I mean, it was just the whole kit and caboodle. Um, and it was fantastic, honestly. I loved it. It was hysterical. It was amazing. And also to be able to get all the smaller hairs. It's a husband and wife pair that own this barbershop. So the husband would do the main hair cutting and then the wife would come in and she'd do uh, basically the trim work. I don't know exactly how else to pronounce it, to explain it, but it was a trim work. So she'd come in with a straight razor and she would, you know, trim up. That's basically what it was. Uh, so it was a very nice haircut. I liked it a lot. I had been needing a haircut and I had been dreading going to get one, but it wasn't anywhere near as bad as I thought it would be. So it was very nice. Uh, but yeah, if you go there, if you're a person that actually, you know, actually shaves, which I don't, they actually do the whole thing, haircut and shave. You know, shaving you know, like shaving a haircut is two bits kind of thing. That old rhyme scheme, as it was many years ago, that's what it was. You know, for twenty twenty five dollars, you get literally a haircut, and they can shave and trim and all. I mean, did they do the whole thing? Then that's actually something that I don't know if a lot of you know this. That's not legal in most barber shops in the states because they have to have a specific permit requiring usage of straight razors and things of that nature. Um, in different barber shops, in most major barber shops. So the major chains don't have it. Some of the smaller places do, depending on where you go, but those are much more specific or like home down barber shops. And you know, I hardly ever see those anymore in the States. Those are much more in like old colonial areas, more or less. I could be completely wrong. I don't know. I just never see them down in Georgia. I think I went to one once a couple years back. And I didn't go back because <laughs> it wasn't worth it. But here, 
hair cutting shops are a dime a dozen. They're everywhere. And they can do everything, shave and a haircut. And it's really cheap. It's really nice, full treatment. It was wonderful. But we ended up going out to another bar after I left one bar to meet up with the people I was supposed to meet up for the fireworks, but I didn't meet up with them because I didn't have any service and they didn't call my cell phone, so we just never met up. Long story short, drinking revelry, lots of food, lots of drinks, lots of good times, just people having a good night and good time. Then we went out, got my hair cut today. Um, what else did we do? Oh, we finally went to 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 the, the Nasu family home. I was able to visit their home and see them in their natural habitat, as it were. And they've got a very nice, cozy little house. I mean, it is a house, and it's within really easy walking distance of my apartment. I mean, it's literally on the way to one of my schools. I pass by their house every single time I go to that school. So I know where it is and I know what cars they drive now. So I mean, I'll be, I'll be, I will always be able to tell who they are and where they are, which is a good thing because they're really helpful people. They have kind of taken me under their wing and I love that because they've been helping me so much. I've been learning so much from them, different phrases, different words, different ways to say things and things of that nature in Japanese. So they've been helping me learn that while also giving me a boost in my confidence to be able to go out and do more. Um, in the world, in, in Japan, basically, which has always been one of my, one of the hardest things for me to do. Um, just because it's so scary out here being away from home and not fully understanding the language. But they've been helping out a lot and I'm very grateful for them. And I, I try and tell them that as much as I can, um, but I still just don't think that there's enough sincerity in it with how there's the massive lack of translation <laughs> between, the, between the, 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 them and myself. But, you know, and then of course, later on, after we went to their house, they ended up, oh, it's lunchtime, let's go to lunch. I'm like, okay, sure. So they took me out for lunch again, had a nice bowl of ramen, had a nice bowl of some type of like egg omelet in like Chinese egg soup over rice. It was delicious is what it was. We had fried chicken bits, um, gyoza dumplings. I mean, it was the whole works and it was just, it was wonderful. Nice, nice good place to go to really far away from my apartment, not going back again, but it's a really nice place. <laughs> so yes, it's, 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 it's been a good day. It's been a good weekend. Um, had a lot of adventures, did a lot of things, saw fireworks, talked to people, got stared at a lot, got laughed at a lot because of course I'm walking around wearing my normal get up, but with a beard and I'm white. <laughs> So I, I draw a lot of attention and I would not be surprised if some of them recognize me from the uh, newspaper article, <laughs> if they read the newspaper. Uh, that newspaper article has made me somewhat of a celebrity, turns out, from the last festival I went to. Um, and if you don't know the newspaper article, I should have the photo up online on Facebook. So definitely go check that out on my uh, Kaiju Carl Facebook page. Definitely worth a look at because of the fact that I'm standing at least two feet above most people in the picture in the middle of a giant crowd of people in a, another festival. It's hysterical. Um, but yes, wonderful weekend, wonderful time. I am thoroughly enjoying my life right now. I am a little strapped for cash, <laughs> but that's because of issues. But we're working through that right now. It's happening. Um, the company is getting back on their feet again, as it were. <laughs> uh, but yes. I'm a teacher in Japan. I love my life right now. I really would like to be able to find my significant other. Um, but other than that, everything else is good. <laughs> so I hope that you've been having a wonderful day and please like, favorite, subscribe to all the socials, spread the word, spread the joy, spread the happiness, spread the weird stories, spread how much life means to me. So hopefully everyone else can Take an example or use it for themselves to be able to say that life is worth living. Life is worth exploring because I want people to go out. I want people to explore. I want people to grow because I'm growing every day. I'm learning every day and it's fantastic. <laughs> it is absolutely the best thing ever. So I will see all of you other gaijin some other time. Have a good day or a night depending on when you watch this video. Bye.